In the naked city, life can be something with no upper limit. Or it can be sharp and small, confining, a trap. It can be the worst trap of all, the human trap. Single perforation. What caliber? No caliber ice pick. Hey. Anything? Perfect top layer. Good. Fred? Who is he? Tobias Bennington, Tenant the Third. Anything for a headline, Toby does it again. The hard way. Fred, who are the women in there? Woman and girl. Better fill us in before we want to talk to them. Well, their mother and daughter, Walter Price, Jessica Glennon. Mother's divorced. You see, Tennant was dating the kid and... Uh... Pretty young, isn't she? Not for Tennant the third. The Tennant brought her home about 225. The desk man checks it out. The mother came in from a date of her own a few minutes later and then... Can't we get out of here? It's all right, Jessica. Everything's all right. I told you people how it happened. Do we do we have to stay here? No, we'll be leaving. We can go out the service entrance. That way we can avoid some of those reporters outside in your hall. That's very considerate of you. Frank, you better get the car. Bring it around the back alley. Meet us at the service entrance, will you? Sure. You girls better get your coats. Rather chilly out. Uh, Jessica, would you please get my coat? While we're waiting, do you mind telling me how it happened? Could save us all a lot of trouble. Well, I came home around 2.30. I got out of the elevator and I heard sounds of a fight coming from the apartment. I, I opened the door and saw... Yes, you opened the door and you saw... Toby was drunk. He, he, he was fighting with Jessica. He was trying to... Yeah, go on. I tried to pull him away from her. I, he turned on me, hit me. Knocked me down. Then he turned back to Jessica. I guess he thought I was unconscious. I grabbed the ice pick and it all became a blur. Was there anybody else here at the time? I mean, other than you two and Tenet? No, nobody. Can't we get out of here now? Yes. Uh, is it necessary my daughter come to the jail? The station, Miss Price. Yes, I'm afraid it is. See, unfortunately, she was the only witness. We'll have to get her statement, too. Correct, Lieutenant. Exactly how it happened. No one forced you to make this statement. No, no one forced me. No undue pressure, physical or otherwise. You did this of your own free will. Yes, yes, yes. Now, if, uh, just tell me where to sign. You satisfied, Counselor? I wish she had called me first. Walter, they did inform me of your rights. That you didn't have I to just... say anything without your attorney being. I just told you this, Avery. 
Now, if someone would just give me a pen. Well, what happens now? Lieutenant, I see no reason to delay in this Price's arraignment. Yes, can't we get it over with this morning? After we get a statement from Miss Price's daughter, we'll see. The of meantime... course, there is uh, nothing to be gained by placing Miss Price in a cell. The next thing I knew, my mother had pulled me. Did you want to change something, Miss Glenna? No. That is, not change, just add that Toby was very drunk and mean. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've already got that. Oh, that's right. The next thing I knew, my mother had pulled me away, and then Toby was on the floor. That thing in him. Question, by thing you mean ice pick? Answer, yes. Yes. Oh, my God, yes. Later, boys. Later. Give us a little bit. No, no. All right. All right. All right. Come on. Just don't forget. Wait. Give us a little Boys, come on. Go. Hey, that was Carrie Glennon, wasn't it? Yeah. It's Goon Squad. What's your connection? Glennon. Gangland chief's daughter involved in tenant murder. Hey, let me get that bitch! Oh. Come back here. Come back. Okay, Adam. Bring her in after you get finished, huh? Mike. Yeah. It's important. Will you excuse me? Uh-huh. I see you know each other. They tell me that you're holding Walter Price, that you killed a man. They tell you right. I want to see her. Okay. Walter, what am I for if not to be called in in a hey, situation we've like... we've been through the whole thing. We've been through it and through it and through it. Kerry. Hello, Walter. I just heard or I would have been here sooner. Please don't... Don't interfere with this. Walter, I can help. You can help me most by just leaving me alone. All right, if not for you, then at least for the kid, huh? The kid. The kid is not involved in this. She doesn't need your kind of help. Avery, how long do we have to stay here? Daddy? It's been so awful, Daddy. have any arguments against my setting bail, Mr. Cowell? Not in the face of a confession and the sworn statement of the witnesses, no, sir, Your Honor. Mr. Holman, just precisely what is Mr. Glennon's status in this courtroom? He is here against the wishes of my client, Your Honor. Mm. Strictly unofficial as father to the material witness. I see. Miss Price, will you step forward, please? Unless there are objections from either side, I'll schedule the preliminary hearing for Friday a week, courtroom A. Until then, the defendant may be released upon the posting of a $25,000 bond. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll take care of it. I can handle things very well, thank you. Avery. We 
We'd appreciate it greatly, Glennon, if you stayed out of this from here on in. He only wants to help. Having Carrie Glennon in her corner is not the kind of help she needs right now. He's right, Chickie. I'm not the best man I've sitting on her side in an open courtroom. We better go home now, Jessica. Wait a minute. We're not in front of a jury now. I'll drive you. Please. It's all right, Avery. Thanks for everything. You stay here with your mother. I'll get the car. Couldn't you try to be decent to him? Just for a few minutes. I'm going to tell him the truth, Mother. You'll do no such thing. For once in your life, you'll do exactly as I say. And not as you do? Jessica, we're both in this as deep as any two people can be. Will you listen to me? Jimmy, we can't change our story now. Not to anybody. Not our story, Mother. Your story. And don't you ever call me Chicky again. The story's a good one. People believe it, and even if they did, they couldn't prove otherwise. You start changing details here and there, and before you know it, they won't believe anything we say. All right, Jessica. Open your mouth to anybody, and you'll lead a wonderful life from that moment on. A wonderful one, knowing that you and you alone sent your mother to the electric chair. But, but you're wrong, Mother. Ladies, your coach awaits. Wages of sin are high. Yeah, real big. Until the final payoff. <laughs> No, we'll get out here. The parked car we just passed got a press card in the window. You want reporters crawling out of your ears? Lose them, Frank, then my place. No, Kerry. All right, Central Park, we'll talk about it there. that old thing. I remember once... I remember. My father used to bring me here. That's right. We all used to come. And you'd ride that big red horse. All right, ladies, let's talk this thing over, huh? Peanuts, popcorn, Cracker Jacks, scorecards. You can't tell the players without a scorecard. Honestly, Come on, Chicky, I can't eat them all. Just enough to... Gary, I'm in no mood for the Glen and Charm. I just... I just want to go somewhere by myself and sleep if I can sleep. So will you please get in your car and leave us alone? I, I know you're trying to be helpful and I appreciate it. But I don't want any help from you. I. I I don't want anything from you. Can anything be clearer than that? Look, Paul, to be reasonable. Stop telling me to be reasonable. When I left you, I didn't want to go. You didn't have to let me go. You had a choice and you made it. Nothing's changed. Just a minute. No, let me finish. Ten years ago, I told you I didn't want anything to do with a criminal, a racketeer, a gambler. And I still mean it. Now, will you please get into that big black limousine and leave me and my daughter alone?
Nothing's changed, huh? Your hearing's still good. That's no answer. Well, that's all you're gonna get. Look, Walter, I'm not asking you to love me. Just let me help you. You can't go back to your part, and the reporters will drive you crazy. I want both of you to wait the week out on my boat, huh? I told you we don't want your help. We don't need it. Look, Walter, this time I'm laying down the law. You don't have to come, but Jessica's my daughter, too, and I want her out of the way this week. It's a little late, isn't it? No, it's not, Mother. You don't have to go. But I am going. Jessica, I forbid it. Mother, you know better than to forbid me anything. Dad, take me on the horse like you used to when I was little. Please. Please, just one ride. Thank you very, very much. Something must be cooking. Well, why would you be going over the photos and sketches from the tenant case again? Come on in. Come on, Adam. Get off the dime. I can see the wheels turning. You don't believe this woman's story, and you know you don't. I'll talk about it when I'm sure one way or the other, Mike. We'll talk about it now. No, I'm not sure yet. I don't have enough to go on. It's for someone else. Not me. Okay, Mike. I like this woman. You what? I like the woman. You like this woman? Yes. What right have you got to like or not like? What right have you got to get personal? This is your job. Even if your own mother were involved in a case, she's either guilty or not guilty. Your job is to dig up the facts. You want to be a judge? Go to law school. You want to be able to say guilty or not guilty? Throw in your shield and sign up for jury duty. Mike, why is it every time a case bothers you, you, you always climb all over me? Why is that? Did I say anything personal? Adam, all I'm asking you is what's bugging you? All right, Mike. But first you tell me what's bugging you. My intuition's got me by the throat. The looks that woman gives me when I ask her where she was standing. The length of time it takes her to answer when I ask her about her daughter's attitude about the fight she had with the late Mr. Tennant. You know, I've got a first-rate hunch that the mother's story is phony. <laughs> You're a guy that goes in for hunches, right? What's your hunch on this? You like it? You remember? That's the one you brought home before we... The night before Mother left you. And you kept it all this time? That's me. Just a sentimental slob. 
Chicky, did Mother ever tell you why she left me? You mean, it's not that your daddy and I don't love you, baby. It's just that sometimes big people stop loving each other. Yeah, I got the routine. And you never believed it. I, I knew that you never stopped loving her. She never loved anyone but herself. She loves you. In her own way. I let your mother carry the load too long with you. But what could you do? She took me when she walked out on you. I'm talking about the blame for walking out. That's what I let her carry. But, Dad, it was her choice. Who else should I blame? It was my choice. She said you and her are the rackets, but not both. But even admitting you're right, that it was your choice, that didn't give Mother the right to stop you from seeing me, did it? Me when I was in San Francisco? Four years when I, when I need, needed you most. 11 to 14, even part-time, like other girls with divorced parents. But you were at boarding school. There were vacations, but Mother always found excuses for us not to go to the coast to see you. The business, the this, the that, and why you couldn't come to see me, and why I couldn't go myself. They're lies. They're awful transparent lies. Years I believed them. And cried every night because I thought my father didn't love me. Come here, Chicky. Before I was 15, I got her to admit it was a court order that kept you away from me. Because you didn't love me. What happened then? Oh, we had our first really big fight, I guess. And then about a month later, you know, the court order was dropped. And you got your visiting privileges back. Can't you understand why I hate her so much now? Heard her tell us so-called love. I never was in San Francisco. And your mother never kept me from seeing you. I was right here in New York State all the time. And I didn't want to see you. Or rather, I didn't want you to see me. Your mother's lies would have protected you. I was in Sing Sing prison in jail. You never wanted you to know. who had squired Miss Price's 18-year-old daughter, Jessica Glennon, on a tour of the Gotham night spots only hours before his death, up until last month, was frequently seen in the company of Miss Price herself. <coughs> Miss Price, a former model, is a partner in the dress designing house of Lasher Price, half Woman fashion. She was formerly married to Carrie Glennon, Mr. Glennon reputed brains behind the multi-million dollar gambling syndicate. Gee, Lib, I bet that Adam can give us the real lowdown on this. No, no, you don't. When Adam gets here, I don't want you to ask him one single question. He's coming to take me to dinner, not to face an inquisition. Well, maybe he'd feel like talking about his work to an interested party. <laughs> Only during interested-type working hours. All of the times it is my self-appointed mission to see to it that he lead an undetective-like life as possible. Whoops. Hi. I tell you what. What? We can get some of these black circles from around these pretty big blue eyes. We can go have a very undetected like cocktail. Oh, boy, Adam, I wish I could wipe some of those dark circles under your hazel eyes as easily. Well, you'll have 45 minutes to try. 45 minutes? Adam, you were supposed to take me to dinner tonight. I know, honey, but uh, curse of the detective class, you know. Swell. The tenant case. Ah. We'll talk about that. Well, then where are you going in 45 minutes? I have a date with a lingerie model. A what? Uh -huh. The 
pantaloon are of Rouen lace. The soutien George trimmed avec la même. This set, worn by the lovely Eve Arthur, is in tiger rose and the decisive ebony. It also comes in temptation peach with blushing lily. Do you know a uh, Mr. Toby Tennant? Toby? Ugh. <laughs> Sit down, friend. Thank you. He and I used to sit and talk right here, just like we're doing now, while he uh, waited for the dragon lady. The dragon lady? Is that uh, Miss Price? Mm, one and the same. No, thank you. Did, uh, did you ever date him? Did you ever hear of a red-blooded American female this side of Grandma Moses who didn't date Mr. Tennant? <laughs> yes, sirree, friends. At one time, I, too, entertained the hope of becoming the eighth alimony Mrs. Tobias Tennant Third. <laughs> oh? And you know something? What? I would have made it, too, if Walloping Walda hadn't stumbled in during one of our more uh, tender moments. What happened? Well, uh, there were no ice picks handy, so she made do with uh, a bottle of gin. That time... Uh, Toby ducked on cue. She must have been very jealous of uh, his attentions toward you. Huh? Mm, to anyone, friend. And take it from me, he had a far and roving eye. Mm. What about, uh, what about her daughter, Jessica? Oh, you mean Little Poison? <laughs> Listen, friend, when Walter Price stuck that uh, ice pick into Toby Tennant's guts, it wasn't to defend herself. It was jealousy, friend, pure and simple jealousy. Her personal wandering Romeo making time with her own amenable little daughter. Ask around, if you don't believe me. Now, Miss Price, you're not under arrest. The only reason I called you in today was to ask you some more questions. And if you answer them satisfactorily, you can go home again. But I told you I did it. What more do you want? To be convinced it was in self-defense. Now remember, Waldo, you don't have to say anything. Lieutenant, this is an out-and-out -out attempt to intimidate you. Now take it easy, Mr. Holman. We've found a motive. Motive? Yes. You were jealous of Tennant. That's not true. Eve Hunter thinks it is. As a matter of fact, she said you nearly brained him once before. Is that right? No, that is... In her dressing room. That was different. I... How different? Same ingredients? Boyfriend in another woman's arms? Only you used a glass bottle instead of an ice pick. That's not true. Jessica and Toby were fighting. Oh, were they? Look, your own desk clerk said you were out for blood from the moment you saw his car parked in front of your house. Now, that was before you could have known anything about a fight. Why wasn't I? Miss Price, I'm waiting. It happened exactly as I told you. I went upstairs and I... Mm, we had that one before. It's the truth. Do we have to stay here, Avery? No, no, no. Of course not, Walter. Just a minute. You're not going anywhere. It's um, a writ, Walter. Rescinding your bail. Now, Miss Price, unless you come across with some satisfactory answers, you're going to jail. It's, uh, it's legal, Walter. Price, we'd rather not use that. Now, why don't we go back from the time you first arrived home, huh? But it's the truth. I, I tell you, it's the truth. I wasn't jealous of Toby. Right? Yeah. I want you to book, Miss Price. Turn her over to the matron. Come on, Miss Price. I, uh, I'll see the judge right away, Walter. You, you'll be out within an hour. Lieutenant, this is all circumstantial. Every bit of it is circumstantial. You're so right, Counselor. You'll never make it stick. What about it, Adam? Can we make it stick?
It's getting stickier all the time. I can't sit down till you do. Is that a rule of the house? Emily Post. How's Jessica? She's fine. She's on the boat. Too bad we can't go anywhere. She doesn't know anything about this. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it would do any good to tell her. That was very wise. I tried to get a private room, but no go. Only for lawyers. I would have thought you had great influence in a place like this. Why don't you stop punching and listen, huh? You told me Jessica was all right. That's all I want to hear from you. Walter? All right. You can spend the rest of your life behind bars if you want to, but you're not going to take my daughter with you. Jessica's completely out of this. Is she? Perjury in a murder trial is no soft rap, cutie. Is she? Has she said anything to anybody? Not yet. How long do you think it'll take a tough, experienced DA to break her down on the stand? The only way that phony self-defense bit is going to stand up is if both of you are coached by somebody more experienced, even tougher than the DA. And who have you got defending you, Holman? He may be great for dress contracts and divorces, but he'll be a pushover in a murder trial. What do you want me to do? I want my lawyer to handle it from here on in. I'm certain he's had great, great influence in murder trials. Don't knock it. He'll put you back in circulation and keep your daughter there. Remember, it's only you now, but you got the kid involved. Adam, those circles are getting bigger and bigger. No, honey, it's the eyes. They're getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> I guess that's from looking through too many magnifying glasses. So, you know, come to think of that, I'm never know a detective to you who used a magnifying glass. We prefer the long view. Oh, darling, how can I stop you from worrying? You're still worrying. You need stronger therapy. Oh, I can feel your mind turning. That's not the way it's supposed to happen. The Earth's supposed to turn. No, the earth's supposed to move. <laughs> Come on now, we've got a problem. Now, wait a minute, honey. You know what we promised? No case histories tonight, huh? I'd rather not talk about it. Okay. No. No, talk about it. It might help. myself very much. I have to put pressure on a teenage kid. Enough pressure to make her put the finger on her own mother. Welcome aboard this ship, mister. Came to talk to your daughter. 
I know she's here. Not to you. You want me to get a writ and make it official? The only way you'll get aboard, doubtful even then. Okay, if it's the way you want it. The next time I come back, it won't be with a simple subpoena for a witness. Hold it. Finish rolling your point. We'll be with a warrant for her arrest. Top of the sense of humor, huh? You want to hear my punchline? I've got a choice of charges. Perjury, for one. Maybe accessory to murder. What's it going to be? With or without the warrant? I'm on aboard. You're a real prince, aren't you, baby? Using a club like that to pressure a kid into copping out on her own mother. I just want to ask you a few questions, Miss Glennon, without taking you down to the station. He can't make you say one word, Chick. Just stick to the truth exactly as you did in your statement. You do that, and you're going to wind up in jail alongside of your mother. Mother in jail? Easy, Chick. Only till the hearing. You couldn't keep your mouth shut, huh? A plea of self-defense won't hold water. Your mother will definitely stand trial. He's only bluffing, otherwise he wouldn't be here. I'm not bluffing, Miss Glennon. We have enough evidence to prove to any jury that you and your mother are both lying. Don't listen to him. What kind of a father are you, anyway? You want your daughter to go up without knowing how the deck is stacked? Let him talk, baby. That's all it is, talk. Go on, talk. All right, Miss Glennon. First of all, we know that you and Tennant were not fighting when your mother came home. How? From the people across the hall. All they heard was music and laughing until she arrived. It was only after that that the fight began. That coupled with the fact that... We have proof that your mother tried once before to kill Tennant in a fit of rage. She caught him in a situation very similar to the one in which he caught you two. No, no, you've got it all wrong. A cut on your face. That wasn't made by any bare fist. That was made by a ring. Now, we happen to know that Tennant never wore a ring, but your mother did. Well, shall I go on? There's plenty more. Don't say a word, baby. It's all circumstantial. It's enough to nail her in a perjury charge. And maybe as an accessory to murder. Do you know what some savvy old prosecutor would do with her story? Tear it to shreds and her along with it. Well, what is it with you, Miss Glennon? You want to go to jail? Is that it? Leave her alone. But don't you press me. Don't push me. Miss Glennon, I swear to you, your lies aren't helping anyone. Least of all, your mother. The district attorney is definitely going to press for a first-degree verdict. But, but it wasn't that way at all. All right, then why don't you help yourself and your mother by telling what really happened? Look, the law allows for human behavior, but it has to have the truth. All right, you're finished. Dad. It's no good. doing here? What's the matter? What's wrong? We're waiting for the police stenographer. Stenographer? Why? I told them, Mother. You told them what? Exactly what happened. No. No, that's not true. She doesn't know what she's saying. She was hysterical. Mother, How could stop she? It. she couldn't. I it's did it no in self-defense. I did it to protect myself and my baby. Didn't you hear me? I told them. They know. They believe me. And it checks out, Miss Price. Just the way she told it. Why? Why did you do it? I begged you. Things would have worked out all right. No. 
No, they wouldn't have, Mother. She had no choice, Walter. They knew you were lying. They understand, Mother. It isn't at all the way you thought it would be. They would have gotten you on first degree otherwise. Now, Jessica, will you tell your story to Miss Lawrence just as you told it to Detective Flint? Well, it... It, it all began in, in Mother's showroom. About three months ago, I, I had gone there to buy some school clothes and... One of the girls was showing me some dresses, but not the kind I wanted. She said my mother wouldn't like it. The ones I wanted were definitely not meant for a church social. We were arguing about it when Toby walked in. A at first, I didn't see him, but Toby never was a man to be ignored. I knew, of course, that he belonged to mother, but <laughs> that's probably why I decided to go after him. He wasn't hard to get. I didn't know then that Mother was fed up with him. And we started seeing each other constantly. Toby would pick me up after classes, and we did everything together. Sometimes we just went driving. Or horseback riding. Or took in the clubs. Mother and I had some buttes over Toby. She kept saying it wasn't because she wanted him, but because he was no good for me. He had a crummy reputation, just a bum whose father happened to leave him $20 million. That he was too old for me. Kitchen sink routine. I told her the only reason she was sore was because she couldn't hold on to him, and I could. That night, the night it happened, Toby brought me home sometime after two. We were both tight. Toby was really stoned. in the desert are marvelous. <laughs> Dinner, hoist a friendly drink? Yeah, come on, give me a kiss for old time's sake, huh? Oh, come on. You wouldn't believe him when I told you I couldn't stand this rotten drunk, could you? That's right, hit him! That's all you ever do, you and your stinking temper! That's the old fire, Walter. More! Go, go, go! Jesse, baby, I. I didn't mean it. Didn't mean it. Didn't mean it! You never mean it! Well, this time, Mother, I'm leaving! And I'm never coming back! Come on, let's get out of here, Toby. Jessica, Jessica, I didn't mean it. Please, Jessica, Still come back. Better, eh? Boy, remember the abuse we used to have? Oh, Toby, Toby, you're drunk, Toby. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
quiet, <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> We've got to think up something. We've got to figure a way out of this. Jessica. Jessica, listen to me. Do you hear me? Do you understand what I'm saying, Jessica? Please. Yes. Yes, I can hear you, Mother. My God. What have I done? What? Have... You haven't done anything, Jessica. Please, baby. You haven't done anything. Nothing. Do you understand? It was an accident. Yes. Yes, an accident. But nobody will believe us. Huh? They'll never believe us. We'll have to think of something else. Self-defense. That's what it was. And I did it. I came into the apartment. Toby was fighting. Mother, it wasn't like that. Jessica, baby, do you want us both to go to jail? Well, no, but... Then do as I tell you. When the police come here, we'll both say it was self-defense. Toby was was fighting you, was, was trying to attack you. Please, Mother, no more lies. Please, you I tell want them you to do I... it. Jessica, baby. You tell them exactly what I told you to tell them. <laughs> Jessica, do you understand? Do you understand, Jessica? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't able to think until after it was done. I was so scared. By the time I wasn't, it was too late. I was trapped with it. Chicky. Chicky, it's all my fault. It's not your fault either, Mother. Poor Mother. Always trying to protect me from the cold, cold truth. It can't be done, can it, Mother? Especially not with lies. Adam. Take the kid over to the DA's office and have her arraigned. Tell them that we're satisfied here that the killing was accidental. With a recommendation like that coming from a hard-nosed old character like you, she probably won't even have to stand trial. You got any objections to saving the taxpayers' money? No, Lieutenant. Not a one. how many different kinds of people there are to fall into them. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one.
Williams film presentation from Columbia Pictures, produced by Herbert B. Leonard.